everyone. My name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all today. We're going to be talking about an oftentimes forgotten subject, middles. We're going to be going over what being a middle means, how it is different or similar to being a little or being an age player. We're going to be going over scene ideas, activity ideas, how being a middle works in a power exchange relationship, as well as why people enjoy being middles in the first place. So if that sounds good, you're in the right place and we're going to go ahead and get into it. So. Firstly, I do need to acknowledge that I have an old, old, old video where I talked about middles before and we're just gonna like pretend that doesn't exist for right now. I have no idea what I said in it, totally cannot remember anything in it at all. You can think about it like a companion piece for this video if you want. We're gonna be going over all the basics today so it's totally not necessary if you have not seen that one before. Now. Let's talk about what being a middle is. So as I define it, being a middle is somebody who in a BDSM context takes on a persona with traits that correspond to a younger developmental age than what the person's biological age is. With being a middle, this would mean typically something between like 12 to 17 years of age, more like middle school, high school, preteen, teen age range. This is in contrast with being a little, where a little is about kind of the younger, maybe zero to eight or nine time frame, where people take on traits anywhere between being a toddler all the way up to late elementary school. Now there is some wiggle room overlap in the middle between these of like, you know, 10, 11, 12 or so. You could call that being a little or being a middle. I'm not gonna tell you which one definitely falls in which category, but that's generally how people separate the two. Now one other thing that people correlate or confuse being a middle would be age play and certainly over the years I have seen people suggest that littles and age play are the same thing. Now based on what I learned when I was coming up in the scene I do think that age play and being a little or a middle are two separate things. So with being a little or a middle what I see as the main motivation behind it is it's about having that like childlike sense of wonder, that curiosity, that naivete, maybe that precociousness maybe even. And it's about kind of going about the world and having personality traits associated with sort of like capturing that youthful energy, that youthful spirit and that joy that can come with childhood as well as the negatives that go along with it as well sometimes. But it's sort of a Ethereal, sort of hard to pin down exactly because being a little or being a middle you can really draw from anywhere in that age range because it's about sort of that nebulous cloud of like feeling younger and childlike as opposed to trying to be a very particular developmental time period and going after that. So somebody who's a little will maybe have characteristics that are more like, you know, toddler age, like using a sippy cup or maybe even a bottle if they're even younger than that. But then they'll also be reading Animorphs or Charlotte's Web or something. And with being a middle, it's very similar, but those traits tend to be a collage of things from like middle school and high school put together. With age play, what I see happen most often is it's not really about like nebulous characteristics that are sort of like present in a person's relationship with other people. It's more about like doing individual things during a scene and doing things in a scene space rather than doing something throughout an entire relationship or having like little-ish like younger interests in everyday life. Like somebody who is just an age player won't necessarily want to like collect stuffed animals or watch cartoons outside of what they do during a scene. This can be confusing and I think where people get kind of you know turned around about this is a lot of people who are littles are also age players and do both at the same time but they can exist as separate things from each other and with littles and middles you are more likely to see them express that side in a relationship dynamic whereas age players tend to be more focused on role play within individual scenes. Obviously, you can be an age player in a relationship, you can be a little or a middle and not have a relationship or only do it during scenes. Those are just really the broad strokes that I think kind of separate those and I'm going to be doing a whole video at some point really soon where I talk about like age play 
versus littles versus middles versus bratting versus daddy kinks versus princesses versus baby girls it's like it's a really long list of things that overlap but i think that's hopefully enough of an explanation for now now moving on into talking more about being a middle what i think motivates people why they would want to be a middle might seem kind of confusing at first because you might go oh my god you willingly want to be 13 again <laughs> like why would you ever want to willingly be in middle school ever again even if just mentally but when you think about it a lot of the reasons why people enjoy being a middle do correspond with a lot of the same reasons behind a lot of kinks i think number one for people that are littles and middles they share this desire to express an inner truth about their personality. I think a lot of people, though not everyone, who is a little or a middle, does feel like it is an outward expression of who they are on the inside to some extent, where it's about getting to share with other people in a safe space their genuine interests, their genuine feelings that their everyday life has told them to leave behind. Because when you're an adult now, you can't be into legos anymore you can't be obsessed with dinosaurs you can't be you know collecting barbie dolls that's kid stuff leave it behind right you're supposed to be an adult now grow up and so for people that are middles and littles it's an opportunity to get to express that stuff without any judgment without feeling creepy or weird or looked down on or feel like they're being labeled as being immature unfairly now speaking of being immature though i will say for a lot of folks that are middles, one of the appeals is the emotionality aspect of it. Because especially when you become an adult, you're told to, you know, keep a stiff upper lip, not share your feelings, not, you know, let anyone pass your facade, right? You're supposed to be, you know, really put together emotionally. Whereas with teenagers, we give a lot of grace for angst and moodiness and being hormonal and not always having all of our emotions figured out. Sometimes like acting a little bit irrationally and certainly getting to express those emotions in an understanding environment can be very healing for people. And healing is a really big aspect of why people enjoy not just being a middle, but also littles, age players, ABDL, and kink more broadly. Healing is a big aspect for many folks. And for being a middle, that healing can look like getting to kind of redo an adolescence that maybe didn't go super well or the way we wanted it to the first time. I know a lot of people that are trans that enjoy doing this type of scene or role play because it allows them to recapture having something they wish they would have had maybe 10, 20, 30 plus years ago and getting to kind of press the redo button a little bit. And so really when you get down to it, the reason why a lot of people enjoy being a middle is the same as most other kinks, right? It's about relaxation and acceptance and healing and security and self-expression and sometimes just plain old having fun. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of littles and middles do find themselves in relationships and that is where they express their little and middle side. Within BDSM, of course, this would mean typically a power exchange relationship. The most typical thing you'll see online would be caregiver little and daddy dom little girl. Caregiver little is like the broader umbrella term for like any type of caregiver and any type of little, whereas DDLG I think tends to be more publicly known but is a lot more narrow. However, it's not just caregiver little or daddy dom little girl. There can also be caregiver middle or mommy dom baby girl or mommy dom middle or mommy dom the middle girl, whatever. There's a million possible permutations on those variations. But typically when you have a power exchange relationship, just to give kind of the broad strokes here for people who don't know what power exchange is, what you will have is you will have somebody who is on the left side of the slash who is a D type or dominant that is the one who is receiving power and or authority in that relationship model. Then you have people who are S types or submissives who are giving that dominant power and authority in the relationship. Typically, though not always, middles and littles are S types or submissives. Not all of them, there are definitely dominant littles and dominant middles as well, but that's like the most common arrangement. So for the rest of this video, I will probably refer to like CGM or caregiver middle to refer to that style of power exchange relationship. And one appeal of being a middle I haven't mentioned yet is receiving nurturance and guidance. Though middles do tend to be more independent compared to littles, 
they do still want guidance usually in their life. They want somebody who can help take care of them and put them on the right path and help kind of with their behavior maybe. They might like rules or discipline. They maybe enjoy punishments as well. Or maybe they just want praise, encouragement, and security. There's lots of ways to do a power exchange relationship and tons of different flavors out there. On those lines, you're not just going to see a middle paired with a daddy or a mommy, though those are the most common terms you'll see. A caregiver can really be a lot of different stuff. They could be a nanny, they could be a school teacher, they could be a school principal, they could be a coach, they could be a governess or a headmistress, they could even be another middle that's taking on a big sister or big sibling approach to help take care of their younger sibling. Really, there's tons of different labels out there, and I'm sure I've forgotten a lot of them and haven't listed them here, but those are some good ones to start with if you want to try them on for size. Now, how would you go about being a middle in a power exchange relationship? What would that look like? And I instantly think of being like a latchkey kid, right? Where before your partner comes home from work, from school, you have to be the one to take care of, you know, getting dinner on the table, getting the chicken defrosted so they can make dinner, putting dishes in the sink or putting them in the dishwasher, getting laundry started. And doing these types of chores, especially around the house, can be a really good way to incorporate service admission into being a middle because you don't have to just choose one. Your caregiver might also give you homework to do on a regular basis. You might have to do book reports or do reading assignments or write essays and give them to your partner for them to grade. It could also mean having strict rules about your conduct and the way that you dress, right? Because polite young ladies never swear. <laughs> sure, sure on that one, but that can be a rule that you have. Or maybe it could be having really strict rules about how you dress when you leave the house and you have to have your caregiver approve your outfit before you leave. And you know, you can do the whole like, but dad, everyone dresses this way, but mom, this is what's cool. <laughs> and have that kind of, you know, tiff maybe leading into a scene or maybe just do it on a regular basis and have your partner pick out your clothes for you and you have to get their approval. And of course, don't forget about the usual things like bedtimes, curfews, required study hours, practicing an instrument, getting grounded or other limitations on phone, internet or social media access. There are so many things to draw from when it comes to inspiration for having a middle in a power exchange relationship. And as I just said, being a service submissive can overlap really well with being a middle, surprisingly. But what might not surprise people is the overlap between being a middle and being a brat. It's so common that many people think that in order to be a middle, you have to be a brat. And you totally don't, but for a lot of people it is appealing and it makes sense, right? Because when you look at a lot of typical teenage behavior, you know, door slamming, too loud music going, I hate you mom, you're the worst, I hate you dad, you're the worst, you know, eye rolling, being on the phone all hours of the night, you know, sneaking onto websites you're not supposed to be on, Lots of bratty behavior that can go along with being a middle and vice versa there. Especially getting to act out that teenage angst we didn't necessarily leave behind in middle school. And when you look at the motivations behind being a brat, they really make sense and line up with why a lot of people enjoy being middles. A lot of brats are very motivated by this idea of like, I wanna be able to act out, but I wanna be punished and disciplined because I wanna be reassured of the relationship and that my partner will still care about me when I act out and that I am not powerful enough to like overtake this relationship. And that can go along really nicely with the middle desire oftentimes to have nurturance and guidance in the relationship. Not to mention, of course, both middles and brats can very easily be masochists and most brats are masochists and part of the motivation behind being a brat is they want like a narrative for when they experience pain or do scenes or get punished and bratting is a way of achieving that. So lots of overlap between being a brat and being a middle, but it is by no means a requirement. And not all middles are general angsty teens. Just like with caregivers, there are tons of flavors under the middle umbrella. You can be a middle who's a perfectionistic goody two-shoes straight-A student. You can be a middle that's a shy bookworm. You can be a middle that got shipped off to military school for the rest of their school time. You can be a middle that is more K-pop obsessed or really, really into boy bands. Or you can be like a fashion addicted valley girl that's always racking up charges on daddy's credit card. You can be a middle that's like 
really into basically anything a teenager is into. And if you're a millennial or you're older than that even compared to me, you can look at sort of what was trendy or typical of teenagers when you were growing up. You know, you can be that sort of reclusive emo kid or you can be a goth mall rat or a completely rebellious punk. Or maybe you want to be an introverted video game nerd or wear a Lolita fashion. I know more than one middle that loves Lolita fashion and it's a very popular choice for middles as it seems. But keep in mind when you're trying to pick maybe what type of middle you are, it can be a form of wish fulfillment. It can really be anything that you want. Did you want to be a cool kid with a belly button ring and colored hair when you were 14? Well, now you can because you're an adult and you can role play being whatever you want. But outside of archetypes, there are many different things that can be associated with being a middle or things you maybe want to do as part of a scene or in a relationship. And there are so many options. Being a little means you get to watch cartoons and coloring books. So what does being a middle have in store? Well, I already mentioned a couple, right? Video games, anime, fashion, being really into, you know, experimenting with your hair or nails or makeup. You could be a horse girl, right? You could be really into horses or dinosaurs or building models or music or fan fiction or YA novels or movies or arts and crafts or dancing or journaling or sketchbooks. The list really goes on and on. But the point is, is that being a middle maybe allows you to try new things that maybe as an adult you go, well, I'm not good at that, so I'm not gonna try it. Or you would feel afraid of being judged if you're not already good at it. So take advantage of that middle mentality of exploring, trying new stuff, finding your identity, and do stuff that you might be afraid to try, right? Take that pottery class, take up painting, give it a whirl, you might love it, or you might not, that's okay, try something else. But beyond just getting kind of enjoyment from these activities, there's lots of activities that translate really well into doing a scene as a middle. And a lot of these are very role play heavy as opposed to like, you know, bondage, say to masochism, things that people largely associate with BDSM, but they can be very fun, right? Like sneaking in to see an R-rated movie, even though your ID says that you're 32. <laughs> like, you know, be like, oh, I shouldn't be here. I snuck in, I tricked them, and now I'm seeing this naughty movie I shouldn't. Or if you don't want to go to the movies, you can do this at home, right? You can sneak, you know, being up late at night and turning on a naughty movie at 2 a.m. or surfing through the maybe more adult channels on the higher numbers on the TV. And then maybe you get caught by your caregiver and disciplined if you want to add in the element. You can also think about things you learned at that age, right? Like for me, that goes right back to like driver's ed. Maybe your caregiver takes on the role of being your driver's ed instructor, or maybe you role play having your caregiver take you in a car for the first time out to drive on your own and learn how to gently press on the accelerator and the brakes and like parking and doing all of that. That can be really fun, especially if you maybe want to explore driving and get more confident with it. You know, you can go through all of that if you want to. You can also role play being more of like a naughty bad seed teenager where it's like, oh my God, they got caught drinking in the house late at night. They got caught trying to sneak out. Oh, no, no, no. That's definitely also going to require some discipline. Or maybe it's more simple than that. Maybe it's just getting a report card checked by your caregiver. Maybe it's going on like a shopping trip to the mall or going to get your nails done. Or maybe if you have a caregiver that's more femme, they can teach you how to do your nails or hair for the first time. Or maybe not even for the first time in air quotes, maybe literally for the first time you're learning how to braid hair or paint nails or something like that. Or maybe it means going on a date night to a bookstore or a hobby shop and fully embracing that you want to buy 10 new YA novels or six new Lego sets or something. You get to pick what you want to do. And I think that being a middle can be very rewarding for people. I think it can be a very fun type of role play. And there is one thing that I have, maybe for some folks, very obviously not mentioned to this point. And maybe if you don't have an inkling yet, now you will. There's a lot of talk online about sexuality with middles and littles. And with middles in particular, a lot of the resources online sort of correlate being a middle with being a like, Lolita or a nymphette or whatever. 
And I'm going to be frank, that's totally a thing you can do, but not all middles or even most middles are going to be motivated by the sort of sexual ingenue vibe that maybe that's more typically associated with. I personally don't love like Lolita Nymphette stuff as a label because of what that book is actually really about as opposed to the like horny interpretation of it, but that's my own personal hang up. You absolutely can explore like sort of having like first time type play with being a middle like you know, I'm losing my virginity for the first time or like fooling around in a car or like the first time, you know, putting your hand down somebody's shirt and like touching a boob. Like that can be a really fun way, especially in like a longer term relationship to like recapture, rekindle that magic and like sense of like desire and exploration. But not everyone's going to be into that kind of sexual play with their middleness, with being in a daddy dom middle girl relationship for that matter and i think you should really pick what works best for you and not feel like you have to do something because it's the norm you get to decide what your own relationship and your own version of being a middle looks like but with all that being said and that's all that i have time for today on this video about being a middle i would love to do more videos in the future kind of focusing on activities you can do for being a middle so please let me know if you'd want to see that in the comment down below or other ideas you have for content related to this as well i would love to know your thoughts especially if you are in middle yourself what did you think about all of this did i miss anything anything else you want to add or correct or anything please let me know in a comment down below if you did enjoy this if you're not already please do subscribe because i make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and bdsm related subjects and finally if you want to support what i do the best way you can do that is with patreon a link to that will be down below if you do already support over there thank you so so much it means the absolute world to me and until i see you all next time i hope you have a great yesterday and a great rest of your week Bye bye